بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن شاء الله if everything is okay we can start with our Reflection on Munajatul Arifin. I'm just waiting for confirmation and inshallah then. Okay. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, last week we had our session on Munajatul Muftaqirin uh, from Ottawa and now I am back to Qom. And we can have it from home again. And uh, over uh, last week or ten days, Alhamdulillah, I visited uh, brothers and sisters in different towns in Canada. And Alhamdulillah, in every place, there were people who said that they follow and watch these uh, sessions. So I hope that inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, would help us to continue with this uh, series of reflections on Munajat Khamsat Ashar and inshallah after that inshallah we continue with other topics. Uh, on the other hand there were many people who said we have just heard about this or we have just uh, recently joined so I hope that inshallah uh, if you can inform other brothers and sisters in any way that you uh, no one have access uh, please do so so that everyone is aware of these webinars okay this is the 12th of whispered prayers of Imam Zain al Abidin, and it's very very beautiful very eloquent and in some aspects, it's a kind of masterpiece in uh, Arabic eloquence. It's very, very beautiful, very deep, and very nicely put the uh, spiritual, intellectual ideas into expressions which are uh, not very difficult for us to understand, at least in the first place in the first sight but when you reflect on them you find that the combination of the words are so profound that you think you understand but indeed you understand very little uh, for example you know we will talk about the like fountains or pools of love or for example nests of thoughts so many things like this and a cup of for example tenderness and love many beautiful expressions are put in this munajat and i hope that inshallah allah helps us to understand this munajat and also to um, be able to really say these words as our own experience uh, it's very much different between saying what uh, Imam alayhi salam is expressing uh, about his experience and what you yourself say as experience that you have had inshallah this becomes also our experience not in the way that Imam of course had but at least a little bit similar to that we should try to achieve uh, as always we start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and then Ilahi we have this Ilahi in beginning of uh, these whispered prayers very uh, clearly because the first thing is to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to address him so we say my Lord my God قصرت الألسن عن بلوغ ثنائك 
کما یلی قوب جلالک Our tongues fall short of attaining praise of thee proper to thy majesty. No matter how eloquent we are, no matter how advanced we are in our linguistic skills, it's not possible for us as human beings and with the limited languages that we have to praise God enough so we should admit we should acknowledge that we are not able to praise him in the way that it's proper for his glory his majesty Jalal means glory majesty so if we wanted to praise a finite being maybe we could praise a finite being enough I'm saying maybe because even in every finite being there are some aspects which are manifestations of God and therefore you cannot even praise them enough it's a very important idea that we have in Dua'i Komel for example that the greatness of Allah has filled everything so even you cannot really explain the greatness of creation of Allah in an ant, in a bee, in a flower even in a sand it's so great that you cannot really explain all the beauties and wonders which are there because these are manifestation of God now imagine if someone wants to praise God himself it's absolutely impossible to praise him enough to praise him proper we cannot even mention all the beauties that exist in the list of his creation let alone to the greatest of his creation and now imagine about Allah himself we are completely incompetent so we say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our tongues are not able to do justice here they cannot praise you enough and it is not only the problem of tongue then we go further and say in addition to the problem that we have with our tongue with the limitations of our human languages the problem is even greater we cannot even understand sometimes you can understand something but you cannot explain it you cannot express it in words you know for example if a mother who has not seen his uh, her, uh, who has not seen her child for 10 years now sees again her child especially after being very worried about her health about her child's health about for example safety so on and so forth how much joy that mother would have to see again her child after 10 years of worries and doubts about the health of the child safety of the child which words can explain that joy so sometimes the problem is the problem of expression but when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have not only problem in our expression we have problem even in our own understanding our intellect are incompetent incapable of grasping the core the essence of your beauty we only can see very little of his beauty we can only understand like surface for a deep ocean 
you know for example when we talk about a very very great scholar who is the most knowledgeable person in a field how can we really understand the greatest of his knowledge you cannot understand you can only understand if you are yourself in that level or at least very close to that level but a beginner would not be able to really grasp the core the essence of that person's knowledge or as we will explain in the next sentence we cannot see with our limited vision all the beauties of God like for example we cannot look at Sun Sun is so bright so shining so illuminating that our eyes cannot cope with its great radiation so we always see other things with the light of Sun but we cannot see directly the Sun itself so our reasons, our intellects are incapable, incompetent of understanding, grasping. Edrak literally means to reach. And it's used in Arabic most of the time for understanding. It's as if your mind reaches a subject that wants to understand. So we cannot reach, we cannot grasp, we cannot understand kun, the core, the essence of your beauty. When hasaratil absar duna nabare ila subuhat wajhik, and the eyes means our eyes, human eyes, fail before gazing upon the glories of your face we have had this concept of Vajhullah, the face of God several times already and we have always explained that this doesn't mean physical face God doesn't have any physical uh, manifestation of his essence he is free from any material uh, body and face here means what can help you to have encounter with God. When two human beings want to encounter each other, they look at each other's face. So face to face is the perfect encounter that we can have, or the best type of encounter that we can have. <clears throat> so we use this concept for God as well, and we say Vajhullah as it mentioned in the Quran uh, and this means uh, what you can look at what you can orient yourself towards what you can direct yourself to so that you can have encounter with God of course as we said before everything in this world has this capacity to become <clears throat> if you have that sharp vision, you can see in everything God the Almighty. Not as part of it, not as being mixed with anything, but as being manifested through things. You can see God everywhere if you have that vision. Amir al Mu'manin alayhi salam said, Ma ra'aytu shay'an illa wa qad ra'aytu Allah qablahu wa ba'dahu wa ma'ahu. I have not seen anything unless I have seen God with it, before it, and after it. The Quran says, Ayna ma tuwallu fa thamma wajhu Allah. Wherever you turn, there is face of God. So, if we want to have encounter with God, we should 
orient ourselves towards Bachelah. But can we really steer or gaze upon Bachelah? No. We can only have little limited experience through the things which are finite, which are limited, which show God's light, God's perfection in a very, very, very limited way. But looking at God himself is impossible for us. Even with the eyes of the heart, we cannot really reach and look at the essence of God. It's too big for us. So, eyes fail before gazing upon the glories of your face, your watch. And therefore, what happens is that if you want to really understand God, you have to understand that first of all, God is something which is not possible to understand through our senses or through our even mind. We cannot really know God. Because if God was something that we could use our, for example, hearing or uh, vision uh, abilities to understand, if God was something that we could touch, or we could see, or even we could understand by our intellect completely, then that would be not God, that would be something finite and limited. If you want to make sure that you are on the right direction, and you are really trying to understand God, you have to always be sure that you keep this in mind. That God is not something that can be understood by us in a complete way, in a perfect way. Anything that we can completely understand would be limited and therefore is not God. In a hadith which is um, attributed, I think, to Imam Bakr salam, our Imam says, كُلَّمَا مَنْ يَسْتُمُوهُ بِأَوْهَامِكُمْ فِي أَدَقِّ مَآنِي فَهُوَ مَخْلُوقٌ مِثْلُكُمْ مَرْدُودٌ إِلَيْكُمْ Whatever you try to understand and you try to distinguish it from other things with the most careful understanding, with the most careful consideration that you can have, it is a still a creation of Yaku. It is not God. And this is why we normally imagine of God as someone who is greater than us, like a maybe Superman, like a very, very powerful, intelligent, loving, kind human being. Of course, we know that God is not a human being, but in your imagination, in your thought, when you want to think of God, you think God is like someone like us, but greater. Uh, Imam Ali Salam in Nahjul Balagha says that, for example, if you ask an ant to describe God, that ant would describe God as a giant or super ant. Because everything that that ant has as a kind of perfection, goodness, wants to keep it for God and just make it greater. So if an ant needs to have antenna or some legs, we think that God also has the same thing but uh, bigger or more powerful. So. For you to be able to have proper understanding of God, you should always do tanzi. You should always glorify God. You should do tasbih. In the sense that we always say that 
God is, for example, knowledgeable, powerful, living, loving, kind, merciful, generous, forgiving, but he is great, much greater than what I think and I say. I cannot really understand completely what it is. I can understand it to some extent. If I think that I have grasped everything about God, I have grasped everything about his power or his knowledge or his life or his will, then it means that I am talking not about God, I am talking about something else which is limited, restricted, finite. So, a person who is on the right track is following a proper methodology about understanding God is the one who knows and remembers all the time that he is not really capable of grasping completely God the Almighty. So, this admission, this acknowledgement of being incompetent by itself is a competence. This shows a strength of your understanding. Those who thought that they can understand God, those who thought that, for example, God can be considered as an idol or as a, for example, human being, or as anything limited, indeed they were much less competent than the people who knew that they cannot understand God. So, the more knowledgeable you become, the more sophisticated you become in your understanding, especially in your intellectual understanding, the more you will be aware of uniqueness of God, of God being beyond the reach of our mental capacity. Not in the sense that when we talk about God, we talk about something unknown. This is another problem. Sometimes people think that we cannot understand anything about God. As if we are entering into a dark space. We don't know what is God. No. It's not true. We know many things about God. Especially under the guidance of the Quran and Sunnah these beautiful du'as and supplications, we understand many, many things about God. We can write volumes about God, very beautifully, very accurately, but all these things that we have in the Quran and Hadith as beautiful descriptions of God are all possible to understand and appreciate if you remember that God is unlimited, God is infinite. So, neither we should say that we understand everything about God, nor we should say we don't understand anything about God. The balance is that we can understand many things about God, but after we acknowledge that he is such a being that we are not able to fully understand. We cannot limit him through our perception or our intellectual understanding. So, وَلَمْ تَجْعَلْ لِلْخَلْقِ طَرِيقًا إِلَىٰ مَعْرِفَتِكْ إِلَّا بِالْعَجْزِ عَنْ مَعْرِفَتِكْ You have not assigned to your creatures to people, khalq sometimes is creation, creatures sometimes is people. There is no way assigned to your creatures or to your people to know you except through al ajz incapacity, incompetence in knowing you. You know, like for example, when even, for example, in science, you want to have a discovery. 
discovery of a new idea. How this can happen? If you think that you know already everything about that field, if you think that the previous scientists have understood everything, so you would never try to understand better. You would never try to discover something new. If the scholars, the scientists, had this assumption that they knew everything, then they would have stopped researching, studying, investigating, and therefore they would not be able to understand anything new. So one step, which is very constructive, is to acknowledge that our understanding is limited. Of course, here there is a difference between God and other things. With respect to other things, our understanding is limited and can be improved. And perhaps we can reach a point that we may understand everything about something. Which is, of course, a big if, because I believe that everything created by God, we cannot fully, completely understand it. And there will always remain for us question marks because this is a sign of God, even if the sign is finite. But if you limit your study area, maybe you can understand everything. But with respect to God himself, definitely you can never aim at understanding everything. It's impossible. So the best way to make sure that you are on the right track is first of all to check whether you have understood this or not. Have you understood that a finite being with all limitations that he or she has in perceptions and intellectual understanding cannot fully grasp God? If you have understood this, so this is step forward and hopefully can be followed by other steps. Elahi فجعلنا من الذين ترسخت أشجار الشوق إليك في حدائق الصدور. This is one of those beautiful expressions that I mentioned at the beginning. My Lord, include us among the people who have so much. Eagerness for you that the trees of eagerness for you has established themselves in the gardens of their breasts. So imagine a human heart or breast. As a garden, a garden has trees. The trees that we have in this garden, which is our heart or breast, are the trees of yearning. So Imam here likens our eagerness to God as trees. It's so beautiful. You know, tree has roots. Eagerness. For God also has roots in our heart, which are understanding of the perfection of God. Tree has branches and leaves and fruits. Yearning for God has branches and produces leaves and fruits, which are a sign of being living and vibrant. A tree is a sign of life. A tree is something very blessed. Every part of a tree can be useful. Every part of a tree, even from a you know limited perspective that we have, it is very useful. Maybe there are much more things that still we don't know about them. Now we want to liken yearning for God to trees. 
trees of joy, yearning. So we say, Oh Allah, please include us among those people within the gardens of whose breast the trees of yearning for you have taken firm root. They are not going to lose this yearning because this is very well established. The roots have gone very deep into this breast. Very beautiful. وَأَخَذَتْ لَوْعَتُ مَحَبَّتِكَ بِمَجَامِعَ قُلُوبِهِمْ And the assemblies of whose hearts have been seized by the adur of your love. There is, when you are, for example, very thirsty and there is a heat in your heart or in your, you know, like liver, as we say, that low, that heat needs something to be quenched. Here we are talking about love. And this thirst for love or this heat which is caused by love is something that has affected the heart of the lovers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many times in literature, you know, we talk about a kind of heat, a kind of burning of the heart of the lovers. فَهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَوْكَارِ الْأَفْكَارِ يَعْبُونَ Now that they have this eagerness for you, this yearning for you, and now that there is such a burning love for you, they should look for a place for rest, a place for being able to quench this thirst. And of course, that must be a place where they can be very close to their beloved. So, what do they do? They try to get close to God through their thoughts. You know, one of the most common experience of human beings who are in love with someone or something is to think about it, to remember it, to develop your thoughts about that thing. As if thinking about something is a kind of being with something. If I miss someone, I think about that person. And this is a kind of being with someone. Not a perfect being, but it's a kind of union in your thoughts. So, the people who have such yearning and love for God, one of the things they do is they seek shelter in the nest of mediation, med sorry, meditation, thinking, reflection, pondering. Through this meditation, they think of God and they try, they try to be from God. You know, if someone wants to distract them from this, it's as if he wants to separate him from his beloved. And it is through this reflection and meditation that we can understand our Lord better. وَفِي رِيَاضِ الْقُرْبِ وَالْمُكَاشَفَةِ يَرْتَعُونَ They feed upon the gardens of nearness and disclosure. So, nearness to God is likened to a garden. Mukashafa means, which means to have some type of vision through which the hidden things are disclosed for you. This is also likened to garden. So these people who are very much yearning for God, loving God, they try to feed themselves in these gardens of nearness. They very much enjoy 
and benefits in being close to God and of course after feeding you need also water ومن حياض محبته بكأس الملاقفته يكرعون and they drink from the pools of love with the cup of gentle favor it's very beautiful so this favor this tenderness الملاقفه this being very uh, gentle and subtle with your beloved and with your lover this is a kind of considered as a kind of uh, drink that you can have and you can um, use to quench your thirst in addition to Hiyab, which is like the pools, the fountains of love. We say, وَشَرَائِعَ الْمُصَافَاتِ يَرِدُونَ Shara'i' is the plural for Sharia. Sharia literally is a way, a passage through which you can reach a river. Sometimes rivers are very... Mm, you know strong they have a strong way uh, you know current and it's difficult to reach them sometimes they are also deep so because over time they go deeper and deeper so from the coast or the shore or the side of the river you would not have direct access to the river so sometimes some passages uh, are created by people or naturally that a little of water like a small small river comes and you can use that and if you follow it you would reach the main source of water that is Sharia so these are the people who enter into the watering places of warm affection al musafat Musafat means very honest, very transparent, very clear. Uh, it comes from Safa. Safa means clearness. So this Sharia, this passage for access to the river, is filled with very clear water. And these are the people who have been able to reach and enter actually yaradun wurud means to enter uh, it can also mean to reach but sometimes it means to enter so they have entered into these passages of uh, water qad kushif al ghita'u an absarhum now the veil the curtain the covering has been removed, has been lifted from before their eyes. This is a very beautiful concept that we have in the Quran in Surah Qaf. لَقَدْ كَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاعَكَ وَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيثٌ A man dies, the wells will be removed. He can see everything. He can see the uh, angels of death. He can see uh, hell and heaven. He can see many things. But of course, there are people who can see everything, even at the time of uh, presence in this world you don't need to die uh, the people who have been able to achieve certainty these other people can see everything they would be able to see the hell right now the hereafter right now so these are the people that who are so much close to God thinking about God, feeling the love for God, being driven by yearning for God, that they have reached those passages of water, those pools of water, of love, and therefore the wells 
are removed. They can see and look at the beauties of God. Of course, in a limited way that we explained before. And now, these people for sure would have no doubts. وَنْجَلَتْ ظُلْمَةُ الرَّيْبِ عَنْ أَقَائِدِهِمْ وَضَمَائِرِهِمْ The darkness of doubt. I think in the past, we some of the discussion, we talked about the difference between shak and raib. Raib is a kind of doubt which is uh, normally uh, not supported by argument, by proof. So these people have no doubt in their heart. And therefore, the light of knowledge, the light of understanding that they have is not darkened, is not uh, switched off by these doubts and this quiet. So this is very important. The darkness of disquiet has been dispelled from their beliefs and their innermost minds. So they don't have about their aqa'id, their beliefs, their thoughts, and whatever is in their mind, any doubt. And then, one tafat, here there's a problem in the spelling of the Arabic, uh, this line. One tafat, mukhalajatu shak an qulubihim wasara irihim. Doubt have not been able to penetrate and mix and get into their heart and their hidden uh, self. Sarira is that uh, part of your reality that cannot be seen. Opposite to what a person, for example, dies, uh, sorry, does. A person looks. Your actions, the way you look, these are obvious. Sarira is something inside. And this is why the Quran says, Yawma tubla sara'ir. One of the qualities of the Day of Judgment is that the hidden qualities become obvious. So, these are the people that the contention of doubt has been negated from their hearts and their secret uh, soul, their secret mind. One sharahat بِتَحْقِيقِ الْمَعْرِفَةِ صُدُورُهُمْ And their breasts have expanded. Sharh Sadr is a very important concept that uh, we have in the Quran and maybe we had it before also in our previous sessions. When your patience increases, when your capacity for understanding or taking pain and troubles increases, when you are able to accept big responsibilities, this is Sharh Sahaj. This is a kind of expansion of your heart, your breast. So their breasts have expanded through the verification of true knowledge. When you know more, your breast grows, expands. And you know there is no limit for our understanding. You can become greater and greater. وَعَلَتْ لَسَبْقِ السَّعَادَةِ فَالزِّهَادَةِ هِمَامُهُمْ Their aspirations have ascended through precedent good fortune in renunciation. Zahada is like zuhd, means renunciation from the worldly pleasure. Because these people aspire to have a very good record in happiness and felicity, indeed they want to precede others, they want to be very fast in reaching felicity, what they do is that they decide, they determine to be Zahid, 
to be detached from the worldly attractions. Because, you know, when you are traveling, if you keep yourself busy with what is around, then either you stop or your uh, mm, speed becomes very low. If you want to travel very fast, you try to focus on what is in front of you. Don't get stuck by looking around. When we are moving towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if dunya tries to attract you towards itself, make you busy with itself, ask you to stay with me, don't travel, you should not listen. You should remain focused, you should not let dunya distract you, and go there forward. This is what Zuhd does. Zuhd means not to be possessed, not to be uh, controlled by worldly affairs, worldly pleasure. So their aspirations have ascended through precedent, good fortune in renunciation. Uh, we have uh, some beautiful expressions to come, but I think I stop here to take your questions. And inshallah, then we would have about half of the munajat, less than half, for the next session. It's better uh, to keep uh, this for our next session so that we have uh, more time to inshallah digest this munajat. It's not good to finish it in just one session. Uh, question one. Salamu alaikum, Sheikh Shumali. Please, can you explain the mystic explanation that Allah can only be contained in the heart of a mu'min? Yes. Uh, you know, this is a very important question, and thank you for asking this. Uh, everything in this world, when I'm saying this world, means the world that we are familiar with, is limited, is finite. There is something in this world which is not really from this world. It is only put in this world. And that is human soul. Our soul, more than being from this world, is from another world. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهَ مَنْ رُوحِي Our soul has a kind of divine a stamp on it, divine color, divine flavor. One of the things that makes our soul very special is that it is fine, it's infinite. But in which sense? Please listen very carefully. We are limited in what we have. But there is no limit for our progress. A human being, no matter how good he is, or how bad he is, even for bad things, there is no limit. A human being, now let us focus on the, on the good side. A human being, no matter how good he is, he is limited. His knowledge, his power, his love, his mercy, everything is limited. But there is no limit in progress. This is a very beautiful uh, sign of creation of man by God Almighty. That God has put infinite capacity in us. Okay. Now, the only thing in this world that can be a place for God, in which God can settle, dwell, is human heart. Because anything else is limited and has limited capacity. We are limited but with unlimited capacity. We can grow and grow and grow. 
And the most valuable thing in this physical world is a human being. So the best place for God to settle is the heart. But the heart of a person who is pure, who is good, who tries hard to be pure and good. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Hadith Qudsi says, لا يسعني أرضي ولا سماعي ولكن يسعني قلب عبدي المؤمن Neither sky nor my earth nor my, neither my sky nor my earth can contain me They are all limited in their capacity But the heart of a believing servant of mine can contain me Not in the sense that we can fully grasp God and put him into ourselves. It means that this is the only place in this world that has the capacity to be united with God without any limit. But this again doesn't mean that we actually become infinite. There is no limit for our progress. There is no limit for our expansion. But what we actually achieve is always limited. But you can always try to be better. So this is very important about the capacity of human being. And inshallah if we uh, cultivate our potentials, then we can become more and more expanded in our breast, in our capacity, and therefore more of God and Godly qualities and God's light can come into our heart. Okay, <clears throat> uh, it seems that um, we don't have any question for the time being. So I think we should now stop. Our time is coming to an end. Uh, I pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to enable us to achieve proper understanding of himself to achieve very deep sense of awareness of himself very well rooted trees of love and yearning for himself may Allah enable us to be with the lovers of himself in this world and the hereafter may Allah enable us to understand the sweetness of being with him and with his lovers and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never changes our condition to something which is less which is worse than what we have it's very sad to experience something beautiful and good and then lose it may inshallah all the time we progress and go further and further towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah never leaves us to ourselves so that we go backward and reverse direction. May Allah be with you and your support. May Allah bless your families and inshallah blesses our community. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring all humanity into a united community of faithful and lovers for Allah and for each other. Thank you very much and hope to see you inshallah again next week. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen.